Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, <coughs> we, shall be, we shall be doing what we came here to do soon, inshallah. I don't mean eating. <laughs> we'll be doing that as well. We're going to be doing our fundraising shortly after our next speaker. So may Allah bless you with sabr. Sometimes when I come to these events, I know what it's like because I sit in the crowd. I was at work all day today. And I'm hungry. I'm nibbling away at those pretzels and it ain't doing it, I'll be honest. But alhamdulillah. Maybe, maybe it just gives us a small insight into what it's actually like to be hungry. Now we know we're going to be fed soon, inshallah. It's totally different. Really, really not knowing when you're going to taste hot food again. When you're going to be able to sit down. And how many of us this evening sitting around these tables praised Allah for being here with our friends how many of us really deeply in our heart said oh, alhamdulillah I'm at another fundraiser alhamdulillah Allah has brought me to this table in, in, the, in, this, in this beautiful venue alhamdulillah I'm here with my friends how many of us really said that wallahi what would those brothers and sisters in Syria do to swap with us? What would those people in the refugee camps do to go back to be with their friends and family waiting for a nice meal round a table with their friends? Our last speaker this evening, alhamdulillah, is none other than our Sheikh Salim Nawab. Sheikh Salim is renowned and extremely well-respected scholar who hails from Forest Gate. He is Imam, a lecturer of Hadith, and associate principal of the Madani Girls' School in Whitechapel. He teaches the Qutul Islam Alim Madrasa. He's been serving our community, walillahi alhamd, for more than 20 years. He is a pillar of knowledge for us, for our elders, for our youngers, and for the generation of the future. I'd gratefully like to ask our Sheikh Salim Nawab to join us now on stage and respectfully ask that we give our attention to the stage. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah hi wahdah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da fa'audu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير وعن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك لنا في شامنا اللهم بارك لنا في يمننا رواه البخاري رحمه الله كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام فاتس إن شاء الله you must realize I'm very very fast number one and number two I am very very boring as you see, the two videos have gone off and the screens have gone off. So inshallah, they've given me approximately between 10 to 15 minutes. I will not be doing justice if I don't say something in regards to Sham. Hence, inshallah, first in the few, few minutes, I would like to mention to you in regards to Sham, a few points that we find in the Quran and Hadith. And thereafter, uh, some points of encouragement in regards to give sadaqah and, cha and, and charity, inshallah. And I will finish on my appointed time over approximately 15 minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first verse of Surah Al-Isra in Banu Israel where he mentions Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a specific mention of Sham in the Quran. This is where the journey of Al-Mi'raj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam starts. The first leg of the journey is from Makkah Mukarrama to Al-Masjid al-Aqsa which is known as Al-Isra and the second leg of the journey is from Masjid al-Aqsa towards the seven heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions regards the land of Sham Al-Ladhi Barakana Hawlahu. This is a land that we have blessed. Allama Idris Kandilwi, Rahmatullah in Ma'arif al Quran al Idrisi, he mentions the reason why the land is blessed. Number one, because this was the area where many thousands of Anbiya alayhi salam were born, number one. And number two, it became the lying resting place of many, many Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Walid ibn Muslim, Rahmatullah alayhi says, 
10,000 eyes that saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into Sham. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, water and believers will always remain in Sham. The hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi in the beginning, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. Oh Allah, grant us blessing in our Sham and grant us blessing in our Yemen. There was a person in the gathering and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, can you not ask Allah to grant us blessing in Iraq as well? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completely remained silent. Three times he says, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. What I wanted to tell you here, the message that we want to draw is please try and read up on our history. This was our first Qibla prior to masjid e haram and Makkah Mukarrama. This was our first Qibla. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Hawala radiyallahu an Sahabi whose narration has been mentioned by Allama ibn al-Asakir rahmatullahi alayhi in Tariq Dimashq. Look what he says. Look at the love he has for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if I knew you will not die, I would never have moved from your side. I would always would have stayed with you. But I know your time, your appointed time will come and you will pass from this world. O oh, Messenger of Allah, can you advise me when you are no longer in our midst and for the purpose of tabligh, where do I go? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, you will go to Sham. You will go to Sham. And then Rasulullah says, he is not too happy with what I've said because he wants to go somewhere else. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, oh, the son of Hawala, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed me the people of Sham. Allah has guaranteed for me the people of Sham. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mean? Allah has guaranteed for me the people of Sham. He meant Allah ta'ala has guaranteed people that will always be believers in the land of Sham, number one. And number two, the people of Sham, Allah ta'ala has guaranteed they will always be pious individuals in Sham. Allama Mulla Ali Qadi Rahmatullah in Mirqat, where he mentions there will always be Abdal in the Ummah. Abdal are the highest category of piety people in the entire world. Majority of them are in Sham. You know, we say, Wilayat ka akhiri darja. Those people who are the walis of this Ummah, greatest amount of those individuals will be in Sham. Thereafter, you will have them in Yemen and Hadramaut. Hence, this is why Rasulullah says, Allahumma barik lana fi Shamina, Allahumma barik lana fi Yemenina. Inshallah, I'm just going to finish with, with regards to the uh, issue of Sham. Again, a hadith mentioned by Imam Abu Dawood, rahmatullahi, on the authority of Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Hawala, radiyallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, before the end of the world, you will see three armies fighting. One army will be in Sham, one army will be in Yemen, and one army will be in Iraq. The Sahabi says, Abdullah ibn Hawala says, O Messenger of Allah, if we are alive at the time, what do we do? Rasulullah says, I choose for you to be a participant in the army of the people of Sham. Again, Rasulullah has praised the people of Sham. One hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, the people, the last people on the surface of the earth, the last people, believing people on the surface of the earth will be in the land of Sham will be in the land of Yemen. A very nice, cool, scented breeze will flow and those people who are the last believers on the surface of the earth, they will be in Sham and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a wind that will, that, that will take out the souls of every individual that is in Sham and thereafter, thereafter there will be the blowing of the trumpet. Sham has a great significance. What is our duty? We know the situation of the Muslims in Sham. What is our duty? We have five, five, five duties. Number one, we make dua for the brothers of, and the sisters of Sham. Not a single dua of our, every single individual here must go empty without making dua for our brothers and sisters in Sham. Number one. Number two, try and help the people of Sham however you possibly can. Be it on an economic level, be it on a social level, be it on a political level, be it on a financial level, but you try and help the people of Sham in what, whatever way possible. Number three, give an attention and have genuine pain, pain for the people of Sham in your heart. Genuine pain, not only onto the tongue, you, it has to manifest into our actions. So have pain for the people of Sham. Number four, realize this is a test of our Iman as well. 
This is a test of our Iman. If this were to happen to us, what was the level of our Iman? Will we be able to maintain our Iman? And number five, remember, Allah Ta'ala tests different people in different ways. If Allah Ta'ala has tested the people of Sham through deprivation, through death, and through massacre and bloodshed, Allah Ta'ala has also tested us in another way as well. And Allah Ta'ala will see are we becoming emerged in the luxuries of the world that we have, that we don't even read about Sham, we don't even think about Sham? Have we become so disorientated? We have become so, you know, as we say, we have become brainwashed that we don't want to see anything about Sham. Please, please read about Sham. Think of the brothers and sisters of Sham. Anyway, that is one message in regards to the area of Sham. I have a few minutes left, inshallah. I would like to encourage it. The main purpose, obviously, here is not to anyone's speech or anyone's Rashid, etc. It will be the fundraising and how we can see, how we can help our brothers and sisters who have been dis displaced and they have become refugees. How can we help them? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in terms of giving sadaqah. I'd like to encourage you, the brothers and sisters, everyone here, whatever you have, whatever you have at your disposal, inshallah, give it out, give your hearts out, inshallah. The hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi, on the authority of Sayyidina Uqba ibn Harith radiyallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion he comes, he comes into Masjid al nabi he performs Asr prayer for the entire congregation and he's never ever done this before, never. The Sahabi says, Uqba ibn Harith radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says, Rasulullah stood up straight after Asr namaz and he rushed back into his one apartment of his wives. He went through, he went through the shoulders of the Sahaba and Rasulullah would never do that. He would never do that. And then he came back fast and the Sahaba say, Oh Messenger of Allah, you've done something today that we've never seen you done, do before. What did he say? I had some gold left at home and I forgot to tell the wife, if anyone comes to collect the money, you must give it to him. You must give the money. I forgot to tell the wife. I just went to tell her, if anyone comes, you must make sure you give. Sayyida Aisha, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, our mother, she was given a gift of 80,000 dirham. 80,000 dirham. This was given to Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anuma. And she tells her servant, I have a list of orphans and widows in Medina Munawwara. Go and start distributing the 80,000 dirham to the people in Medina Munawwara. At the time of iftar, she says to her slave girl, Qarribi lana al futur ya jariya. Oh jariya, oh slave girl, can we have something for iftar? The slave girl gives Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhuma one bread. And she says, this is what we have. Sayyida Aisha says, but you had 80,000 dirham. She says, but you told me to di 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 distribute the money. You should have told me that you were fasting. At least keep some dirham so we can buy some food and we can give you at the time of iftar. This is a lady who even forgets she is fasting. When the money comes to her, she cannot rest until she can give everything in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm saying, when Allah ta'ala gives you, you give it. Why? Because Allah ta'ala will never ever decrease your wealth when you give in the path of Allah. Hadith mentioned by Imam Abu Dawood rahmatullahi Dawu mardakum bis sadaqa. Do ilaj of your sick with by giving sadaqa. In 2011, there was an article in the Saudi newspapers. One lady, one lady who was diagnosed with blood cancer. She went to Philippines and she got a slave girl. She brought her back into Saudi Arabia. Why? For her personal needs. She can help her out. You will not believe what used to happen. Every day, she goes to the toilet. She spends so much time in the toilet. The Filipino, she's spending so much time in the toilet. So what happens after a few days, the mistress says, why are you spending so much time in the toilet? She says, when you took me from Philippines, I had recently just given birth to a child. So now that I am here in, in, in Saudi, in Jeddah or whatever, now that I'm here, every time I go to the toilet, I go out to release all the milk. And all the milk comes out and thereafter, when I release all the milk from my breast, only then I come out. Her eyes opened. Her eyes opened. She says, this is your ticket to go back to the Philippines. And I've hired you for two years. You will go back. You will look after your child for two years. You will milk your child. After two years, you come back and you still have your job. And this is the payment for the two years in advance. This is the payment of two years in advance. This is your plane ticket to go back to look after your child. 
Look for what she does. The next appointment she goes to with the doctors, the doctor says to her after taking the blood test, she says, have you had any treatment besides coming to myself? She says, I've had absolutely no treatment. The doctor says to her, your blood is better than mine. Your blood is better than mine. Your blood cancer is gone. This is what Rasulullah is saying. You do ilaj of your sick by giving sadaqah with that intention. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure the sick. Hadith mentioned by many, many scholars. Inna zilla al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamah sadaqatuhu. You want a shade on the day of qiyamah. The sun at the core, the core, the sun is 15 million degrees centigrade. At the core, at the photosphere, it is 5,000 degrees centigrade. That sun will be one mile away. People will be sweating. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Haf Hafiz ibn Hajar Asqalani, rahmatullahi has mentioned the hadith, inna zill al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamati sadaqatuhu. Your zill and your shade on the day of qiyamah will be the charity that you have given in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what will help you on the day of qiyamah. Allama Abu al-Qasim al-Qushayri rahmatullahi alayhi has mentioned a beautiful incident in his kitab At-Tahbir fi At-Tadkir I have I think I have 30 minutes left inshallah I will I will finish inshallah At-Tahbir fi At-Tadkir Allama Abu al-Qasim al-Qushayri rahmatullahi has mentioned a beautiful incident and he says what you know what I'm trying to say open your account Open your account and invest today and you will see insha'Allah on the day of Qiyamah that maybe that dust that we have given in the Qabristan, maybe that will come to aid us. Allama Abu Al-Qasim Al-Qushayri rahmatullahi mentions the incident and he says there was one individual passed away, he was presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala says to him, his bad deeds are more than his good ones. So therefore, he is going to have to pay in Jahannam. He will have to go into hell. This individual is scared and in the, suddenly the angels come with a bag and they put it onto his scales and Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him salvation. He says, I went to the bag and I saw in the bag that there was dust. The bag was full of dust. He says to, he says to the angels, I don't understand what is the dust. He says, one day you went to the janazah of your Muslim brother. You went to the janazah of your Muslim brother and the dust that you threw on his grave, this is the reward of that dust that you throw on the grave of your Muslim brother. What I'm saying, look after the orphans. If you do, inshallah, you know, I'll just quote one, two more incidents, inshallah. In Hayatul Sahaba, Allama Yusuf Kandalwi, rahmatullahi, has quoted, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had one sahabi, Bashir ibn Aqraba, he came to Madinatul Munawwara with his father. He came to Medina Munawwara with his father. What I'm saying, follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and become the father of a yatim. Become the mother of a yatim. Allama Yusuf Kandalwi, rahmatullahi alayhi, in Hayatul Sahaba, he mentions the incident. He says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahabi, said, Bashir ibn Aqraba and his father, they came to Medina Munawwara. He's already lost his mother. He does not have a mother. He comes to Medina Munawwara and then the father goes out in battle. The son, Bashir ibn Aqraba, he stays behind in Medina. It was the custom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he used to come back from Medina, the children used to come and welcome Rasulullah and the entire Muslim army back, 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 back into Medina Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sees this young boy, Bashir ibn Aqraba radiyallahu anhu, and he, Bashir says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Mada fa'ala abi? What happened to my father? The eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam welled up and what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say? He says, Ama tarda ya Bashir, Ama tarda ya Bashir, an yakuna Allahu, sorry, an yakuna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abak wa Aisha tu ummak, O Bashir, are you happy with the fact? Are you happy with the fact that Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam from today will be your father and Aisha will be your mother? On the day of Qiyamah, every individual here, every individual here will have to face Allah. Every individual. Hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, on the authority of Sayyidina Adi ibn Hatim, radiyallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ma minkum min ahad illa sayukallimuhu Allahu yawm al-qiyamah. Laysa baynahu wa bayna Allahi turjuman. Every individual will have to speak to Allah on the day of Qiyamah. You will be in between Allah and yourself. There will be no one to translate what you have to say. You will understand Allah. Allah will understand you. Fayanzuru ayman aminhu. A person will look right. Fa la yara illa ma qaddam. You will only see what you have sent forth from this world. 
دنیا سے جو بھیج دیا تمہیں وہی نظر آئے گا اینڈ ویارا اش ام امین ہو یو ول لک ٹو دا لیفٹ فلا یارا علامہ قدم یو ول اونلی سی وٹ یو ہیو پرزینٹیڈ اینڈ دین ویان ضرور تلقا وجہی یو ول لک ان فرنٹ آف یو فلا یارا النار اینڈ یو ول ناٹ سی اینی تھنگ بٹ دا فائر آف ہیلپ فتق النار ولو بشق تمرہ رسول اللہ سیز ایون اف اٹ مینز یو گیو ون ڈیٹ ون ڈیٹ ان اوڈر ٹو سیو یور سیلف فرام دا فائر آف ہیلپ یو مسٹ ڈو اٹ یو ڈو یو ڈو اٹ ون لاسٹ پوائنٹ ان شاء اللہ مالک ابن دینار رحمۃ اللہ علیہ مالک ابن دینار اے گریٹ گریٹ اسکالر ان فرنٹ آف ہز وائف ہی یوز ٹو ریڈ دا ورسز آف سورت ال سورت الحاقہ ہی یوز ٹو ریڈ خذوه فغلوه ثم الجحيم صلوه ثم في سلسلة ذرعها سبعون ذراعا فسلكوا إلى الآخرية Look what he says He reads the verses wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angels Take this person, shackle him and throw him into the fire of hell This person, Malik bin Dinar says to his wife Allah says why will these people enter into the fire of hell إنه كان لا يؤمن بالله العظيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين So he says, number one, Alhamdulillah, we have Iman. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has given us Iman. So half, Alhamdulillah, we are free. Now, in order to completely free ourselves, what do you do? You spend in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, help the people who are needy, who help the people, people who need your, your aid. And inshallah, those people, mashallah, who are not so rich, and maybe you can't give. You know, every individual can give. You believe me, every individual will, can give, and every individual can, you know, there was one buzurk. There was one saint. He was, sat, he was standing on the road with an onion. With one onion. Someone passed him and said, what are you doing with the onion? He says, today to give in sadaqah, I have nothing but this onion. Inshallah, I will just give this and you, you, you don't, don't know Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might, you know, everyone has to die. Said in Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu anhu used to say, كل يوم يقال فيه مات فلان ومات فلان. Every day it is said he has died and he has died. There is, it is imperative tomorrow it will be said مات عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه. إن شاء الله when you give remember you are in need equally to give as, as the people are in need to achieve and receive. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى give us all the understanding and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى allow us to empty our pockets. حسن البسري رحمة الله عليه وسلم من تيقن من تيقن بالغيب فَقَدْ أَخْرَجَ مَا فِي الْجَيْبِ A person who believes in the unseen, he will take out what is in his pocket, inshaAllah.